know that your mother for an era is off to a smashing start in the past, but, hmm? Oh, yes, after taking over, he botches his coaching search, getting publicly, publicly, um, announcing that he was rejected by two, two of his choices, making Pittsburgh look like a terrible organization. Then he hires a coach out of junior with no experience. Fine, I already talked about that. Then he decides, oh, you know what? We don't have enough grit. We don't have enough character. We're going to sacrifice skill for grit and leadership and character. And So he talks to 15 teams about James Neal, even though James Neal did not ask for a trade, and he gives him away to Nashville. Oh, we'll just we'll just give you away. Even though every team's looking for a 26-year-old goal-scoring winger, and he's one of the best in the game at that, no, we'll just give him away to Nashville. <laughs> Two players, one terrible one, one okay one, not even a draft pick, not even a draft pick. Are you kidding me? You're telling me you could not get Nashville's first round pick for that. That's atrocious. You traded your best winger, 26 year old goal scoring winger, best friends with Malkin, to Nashville for Patrick Horfist. He's a fine player, um, but he's not going to get 40 goals. He just won't. He's a different player, um, but he's a year older, and he also got Nick Spalling. This is supposed to be a team that wants depth on the wings, wants uses analytics now. They just hired Jason Carmano, so it's their fifth GM, VP of Hockey Operations, to use analytics, and they traded away one of their best analytics players. Yes, he did have good course numbers from playing with Malkin, but if you look at the playoffs, he wasn't playing with Malkin a lot of it, and he still had some of the best possession numbers on the team, playing with Sutter and Jokin, and James Neal did. And they get a guy in Hornquist who has pretty good numbers, but Nick Spalling, who his Corsi in Fenwick is terrible, very, very sheltered starts, played against some of the worst competition in the league. In return, the Predators don't even give up a pick. Are you kidding me? Like, when the Penguins got James Neal, it was a completely lopsided deal. They stole that trade, Neal and Niskanen. And now they've reversed it. And he's been on the other side of a lopsided deal again. Now, maybe this trade will work out for the Penguins, but if you take their numbers and you adjust them, Neal still better offensively than Patrick Hornfist. Like, he still he still has one of the best shots in the game. Even if you don't have Malkin being in the puck, he's still going to get you at least 30 goals at the very minimum. You put him on the power play, he's one of the best um, weapons in the league on the power play. Shooting on his off wing, that's so hard for goalies to stop. He got 27 goals in Dallas as a 23-year-old before he was really in his prime, playing with no one. Like, he's going to do some damage there. Like, and people are going to say, oh, yes, he didn't produce in playoffs. Oh, yes, he has bad attitude. He has bad character. La, 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 la. Shut up. What have Horn Chris and Spalling ever done in playoffs? Neil got a hat trick last year in the playoffs. He had... I think just under point per game in the playoffs this year, he looked good. He was not used with Malkin for most of the time, which affected him. And, but he wasn't used on the power play, which is his best part of his game. He was not used on the number one power play unit for some stupid reason. I'll never know why Bosma did not do that. And, like, of course he's not going to be scoring if he's not even put in a position to score. And, you know, yes, he's been suspended three times. Yes, he is not always, you know, make the smartest moves. People know to target him because he runs around like a madman on the ice sometimes. But so does Malkin. Malkin does the same thing. You know, Latang has kind of a surly attitude. He loses his cool. You don't hear about the Penguins trading Latang because he's a surly attitude. To me, it seems like they wanted to give him away because it was easy and they said they wanted to save space. They don't save any space. Hornquist makes almost as much as Neil. He's a year older, so they're older and slower, and Spalling's gonna get a raise. 
and he's going to make around two million. So really, they have less space than they did before. It's not very smart. Even if Neil did have a bad attitude, which he doesn't, because I've met him, he's quite nice. He's out of my hat. Um, and I've seen interviews with him, and he seems fine. You know, reporters ask him stupid questions. It's amazing the crap players have to deal with, and the reporters ask him dumb questions like, "Did you mean to hit him in the head?" You know, "What did you think about the hit?" Like, of course they're going to get annoyed. Of course they're going to get surly, and they have to deal with the stupid crap. And media members blow way out of proportion. If they say even one thing that sounds, you know, a little bit creative or doesn't sound like a typical Jonathan Taves type ho cle hockey cliche, reporters hate you. They hate any sort of player with any sort of personality, and they spin it and say he has attitude. We saw this very draft, and no one wanted to take Josh Hosang or Anthony D'Angelo because of their attitude. It's ridiculous, you know? Like, same thing with Tyler Sagan. That's why he got traded, because he partied too hard. Boston regrets it now. Winnipeg wants to trade Evander Kane because he partied too hard. They're going to regret it. Chicago did not trade Patrick Kane because he partied too hard. Won two Stanley Cups. Philadelphia traded Mike Richards and Jeff Carter because they partied too hard. Now they won two Stanley Cups in LA. They didn't suddenly get an attitude change overnight. No, 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 no. Maybe they never had an attitude problem. Maybe just media members blew it out of proportion because it's, you know, any type of player that has any sort of personality automatically has an attitude problem. It's ridiculous. Who cares? Does he produce on the ice? Does he get goals? That's what I care about. You know, Penguin uh, media members and lots of Penguins fans are completely um, applauding this trade because they got rid of a bad egg and ownership was sick with dealing with him, you know. They could have talked to him. They could have helped change him, you know. The old regime, they tried a bit. They did not, I don't think, tried hard enough. The new regime did not even try. They came in right away, decided they wanted to trade him and got rid of him. They could have talked to him like they talked to Matt Cook if they really wanted to keep him, but they didn't. They didn't. And... You know, um, they didn't even talk to Malkin about this. And people are saying, oh, hockey is not about fun. It's about winning. Well, guess what? Winning is fun. You know, it's about su not about the superstars. Well, it is. It's, you got to make them happy. And now Malkin has no wingers because Jokinen's gone. And no best friend because Anil's gone. And they're saying, oh, well, we're going to get Nikolai Kuhlman from Toronto. And that's great. And I'm sure they will. And they're great friends. But you could have Kuhlman and you could have Neil instead of having Kuhlman and Hornfist. The team is significantly worse, significantly older. Well, a year older, but still. It just doesn't make any sense, you know? And Neil produces on the ice. I don't care if he has a bad attitude. Does he score? Does he produce? He does. That's all. That's great. That's what I care about. He has the fifth most goals in the league since 2009, behind only... Axel Vechkin, Steven Samkos, Corey Perry, and Phil Kessel. That's great company. Elite company. People hate Ovechkin because he has a, you know, he's a bit of a crazy attitude. He's the best goal scorer in the league. You're just going to go treat Ovechkin? No, it's ridiculous. It's just, you know, grit and character and leadership are three of the most overused words in hockey, and I hate it. I hate this is the way the game is going. They traded for Hornkus because he wore an A in a sweater, and he had leadership, and he has grit. You can't measure leadership and grit on the ice. I'm sorry, you can't. A player scoring and stepping up in the last minute, that's not leadership. That's skill. You can measure skill on the ice, which James Snow had. He's got a couple OT winners. He's got a couple hat tricks. That's skill. You can measure skill. You cannot measure leadership and grit on the ice. So this nonsense about he did not have leadership, he did not have grit, he was a bad egg. It's ridiculous. Who cares? Who cares? These are the same idiots that said Crosby did not have good leadership because he didn't score and step up in big games and playoffs like Jonathan Taves did. Look at who Taves played with. Look at who Crosby played with. Okay? It's just, this is a completely lopsided trade. Pittsburgh got absolutely fleeced by David Poyle. Absolutely fleeced. And if Nashville can get even a half-decent center to play with Neil, that is going to be scary. And they're going to be good, and Pittsburgh's going to be worse. And this era is not up to a good start. It's just... <sighs> I miss Ray Shiro. You guys obviously know how I feel about the trade. Um, let me know what do you think about the trade. What are your thoughts? Please comment in the comments box below. Um, tell me your comments on the draft. I did not even touch on that. 
Um, if you like this video, please like it. If you really like it, please subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Twitter. My um, handle is in the uh, box below. Please share with all your friends. Tell everyone, and I'll see you on Tuesday after Free Agent Frenzy when hopefully the Penguins will sign four forwards that they're supposedly trying to sign.